Um, in addition, please take advantage of the, of the chat feature. Um, we're going to ask all attendees stay in, in mute mode, but if you have a question, feel free to shout out, raise your hand. Uh, we definitely want this to be as interactive as possible and for all of the participants to get as much out of this as, as we can give. Um, you know, we're a small school, but I don't want to steal any of our president's thunder, but like she says, we're small and mighty. Um, so, you know, we handle a, a, a multiple tasks at a time. So we want to be able to help you out on this. So on the bottom, you're going to see the chat feature. Please feel free to use that if you have any questions. Um, we're definitely going to have open question and answer periods at the end. And just again, feel free to ask questions. Um, real quick, before we get started, I just want to make sure that we cover everybody's information that they want covered. So if you have a specific topic, a specific uh, major that you want covered, throw it in the chat just to keep, you know, Alex, Dr. Katie, and I on check. So we make sure we cover that. Uh, before we do kind of head into our presentation, this is what it's going to look like. Dr. Katie is going to provide a, a, a welcome for the session. Um, we're going to do a brief overview of Johnson College, a little history, a little background. We'll talk about our programs. We'll take a virtual look at our campus and our labs. Uh, next, we'll talk about next steps in terms of admissions requirements. Um, and then we'll also highlight our student resources that we have on campus and everything from all of our st uh, staff and faculty and our resource departments. Talk about next steps, wrap up Q&A, and if you like what you saw virtually, uh, by all means, in, in a week and a half, we're going to have an in-person open house. So uh, if you want to take that next step, definitely come on board. So um, right now, I would like to welcome our president and CEO, Dr. Katie Leonard. All right. Thank you, Bill. I hope everyone can hear me okay. Um, you know, as Bill said, I'm Dr. Katie Leonard. I'm the president and CEO of Johnson College. I just want to thank you all so much for joining us for our fall 2020 virtual open house. Um, you know, something that I always like to share is, is how much Johnson College prides itself on delivering on its mission. Uh, and our mission is to provide real world hands on learning in a caring environment that prepares graduates to enter into or advance in their careers. Uh, our founder, Orlando S. Johnson, he founded us as a school where young men and women could be taught useful arts and trades that may enable them to make an honorable living and become contributing members of society. His goal was to keep young people out of the anthracite coal mines, and our goal is to provide students with an education that will lead to a family sustaining wage and a career that they can build upon and be so proud of. Uh, as we know, this is more important now than ever before because the industry in this area needs us like never before. Uh, to say we are founded and grounded in industry, we pride ourselves on those strong industry uh, relationships that we have with area employers. Um, and it started with Orlando and it continues with, with our students today. Um, even through the pandemic, you know, the college community saw and continues to see opportunities to build an even better, safer, and stronger Johnson College. Um, this is sort of our we work spirit, as I like to call it, uh, and it's this type of culture that we've built, uh, one that troubleshoots and looks for creative solutions, um, and it's just something that we've, we're very proud of here at the college. We never see problems. Um, we always see opportunities and solutions. Um, we're very skilled troubleshooters. Uh, we work to be the leader in the essential industries that are critical in the lives of every American. Uh, we said, you know, during the pandemic that while the rest of the world stopped, um, you know, Johnson College and our students and our alumni and our industry partners, we all kept going. Um, and we kept the, the economy and the workforce of the region and, and beyond going. Um, and people like to talk a lot about, you know, robots and automation and how, you know, they, they're, they're gonna take over. But while those jobs may be changing, um, they're, they're not going away. They're simply evolving and we, we evolve with them. Um, two of our original programs, carpentry and cabinet making and machining, um, you know, we still have them on campus. And like I said, they're evolving. Um, machining has evolved into advanced manufacturing, um, which, which does include automation and, and robotics. Um, but at Johnson College, we stick to our roots and, you know, we continue to advance and grow and always to meet industry needs. Um, you know, something else we like to say is that when industry calls, uh, we answer by providing you, the student, with live labs through our industry immersion program, our robust internship program, and the exposure to industry from day one. We set you up for success in your chosen field, and we also strengthen the workforce in the community around us at the same time. 
Um, Boston College is like no other college. We're not a four-year college. We're not a community college. Um, we are a ready-to-get-to-work college. Our greatest strengths continue to be our size, the speed at which we can get students into the workplace, develop new programs, and our reputation for producing the best technicians and technologists around. Uh, we are leaders in hands-on education, um, and we always will be because of how we fulfill our mission to our students. Nothing deters us from this. Um, and I believe that's what makes Johnson College the essential and powerful institution that it is. Um, we will continue to demonstrate to the region um, just how we work. So again, thank you all so much for joining us to learn more uh, about how to deliver on our mission. And with that, I will turn it over back to uh, Mr. Burke. Thank you, Dr. Katie. Um, well, you stole kind of the next part of my presentation. No, but that's okay. So you guys, I mean, a lot of, a lot of you on the call may be very familiar with Johnson College. Um, Dr. Katie gave a, a great explanation here on, you know, how we're not a traditional four-year school. And at the same time, we're definitely not a traditional two-year school. Um, we, are, we are the essential school, I think, you know, it, it, how we came to really see ourselves. So it, it, this is a really, really, really high level overview of Johnson College. So we do have a 44 acre campus. Um, I know a lot of people who have been to, who have been here before kind of say, wow, that's a lot, it's a lot bigger than I thought. Um, you know, we're spread out, but you know, we also have our, our buildings focused within those specific trade areas. Um, we are in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Um, you know, we have people all across the, the state on our call here today. So uh, it's about an hour south of the New York border, another hour and a half. Uh, west of the Jersey border. So we're in Northeastern Pennsylvania, um, founded over a hundred years ago. And Dr. Katie gave a great explanation about Orlando Johnson, who, um, you know, really had that mission for uh, uh, training, training the, the youth. Um, we have 15 associate degree programs focused on providing students with the technical skills and, and general education needed to really succeed in the demanding industry-driven world. Um, we are committed to hands-on learning with industry-driven curriculum. And you know, what we mean by that is, you know, we, we want to know what, what industry needs uh, and how we can deliver that from our uh, uh, training here on campus, not only here on campus, but off campus. I mean, we, you know, one, one other thing that Dr. Katie really mentions is that industry is our campus. Um, you know, we try to get out there as much and provide as much real world hands-on experience as we can in all of our programs um, to help students really get that experience that they need moving forward. Uh, and, and gaining those essential careers. So really high level on Johnson College. And now we're gonna take a little bit of time to kind of talk about our, our programs and our majors. Um, so uh, I'm gonna turn it over to Alex right now to get us started in our uh, uh, electronic and industrial careers. Awesome, thank you, Bill. And thank you, Dr. Katie. Welcome everyone. Uh, I know I've worked with some of you over the last uh, few weeks, few months, um, as far as you know, through the enrollment process. But like we said, we're happy you could join us um, on the virtual open house. Um, one of the things, you know, Bill and Dr. Katie mentioned, um, and I'm going to echo that a little bit, you know, we are a hands-on ready-to-work school. So I, I want you guys to see that. I'm going to kind of go through all of our programs here. Um, but the thing that I want you to know is, you know, we want to we want to showcase to you guys how Johnson College operates. So we are a small college and we thrive on personalized attention. So like Bill said during this, feel free to, if you want to take your cameras off, ask questions. Um, I know all of you have indicated a program or major that you might be interested in. So if you want to go a little bit more in depth on an area, um, maybe you don't want to take your camera off and want to do it in the chat, we're more than happy to go a little bit more in depth on certain programs or answer questions. So I just want you guys to feel comfortable in that regard. Um, we'll kick it off. All of our programs here are broken up into different divisions at Johnson College. Um, so we have four of them actually. So the first one we're going to go through is our electronic and industrial division. Uh, so this includes uh, four of our associate degrees and one of our academic certificates. Uh, advanced manufacturing, Dr. Katie had mentioned machining was one of our earliest programs here. Uh, advanced ma manufacturing includes uh, a lot of machining, so metal work, um, so manual mill, lathe work, um, kind of, you know, diff forming different pieces of metal. Um, and then we go into 3D printing, which is cool. So the kind of give you a little bit of an idea on how this program works. And, uh, you know, you can kind of see a little bit of a view of the lab here. Um, you know, people think manufacturing, they hear that word, and I think there's this stigma. They might think like, you know, dirty and, you know, dark, dingy spaces. Look at this lab. It's clean, uh, it's organized, it's well lit, and that's how manufacturing in today's world works. So that is why this program exists. 
So to give you an idea on how this works, I mentioned like machining, metalworking, 3D printing, okay? So let's see, you, you need to make a piece out of metal, okay? So let's just pretend that you got a flat tire in your, your car, okay? Um, or, you know, you, you lose a lug nut on your car. We'll just use this example, okay? And you can't order another one. You need to make one out of metal, okay? Well, if you're gonna make a lug nut out of metal, you're going to have to try and figure out the specifications. It's going to take time and it's going to take materials, you know, to make this. So what you could do is go over to one of our 3D printers. You could design this, this lug nut for your car, you know, to tighten your tire on, on one of the 3D printers. To print the, the amount of filament that it would be used for this lug nut would be, I don't know, two or three cents worth, okay? So you would print this lug nut to your specifications. You would have the threading in it. You would take it out and see if it fits on your vehicle. Well, say you try that three or four times, it doesn't work. Well, after that, what have you wasted? Maybe 10 cents on printing it? Well, finally, you get your exact specifications. You go in, you check, um, you know, you would check the, uh, the lug nut basically, see that it worked, and then you would go back and make sure everything would work with metal and you would make it out of metal. So just to give you an idea on how that machining side of it works. So it incorporates that mon modern manufacturing and the uh, metal side of it. So it's pretty, pretty neat program we have at Johnson College. Um, again, it was just one of our older programs, so I wanted to kind of make sure we touched on it a little bit more. Um, going forward on this on our electronic and industrial, uh, two of these programs that are very similar, biomedical equipment technology and electronic engineering technology, um, might not know what they are right off the hop. So biomed is essentially fixing the electronics in medical machines, okay? So think heart monitor machines, blood pressure machines, things along those lines. And electronic engineering goes very close to that, but it is more um, in terms of uh, fixing electronics. So systems, sensors, robotic arms, things along those lines. So again, that modern manufacturing side of it. Um, you know, clean environments. Um, people always say, you know, workers are being replaced by machines. Technicians and electronic engineering technology are the technicians that fix those machines. Uh, just kind of moving down our list here, computer information technology. Uh, another one of our associate degrees, that is your IT person, okay? So think networks, systems, PC repair, programming, um, you know, we have them at Johnson College, we have technicians, we have technicians, pretty much any business has a, a computer technician. So our students learn it all in this program. Um, it's kind of a full service program and you get different looks at everything. I know Brandon uh, mentioned in the chat that he was interested in computer, uh, computer information technology. Brandon, I don't know if you want to share, is there anything specific you were interested in? in? Because we do have some exciting, exciting things happening with our computer information technology program uh, in, in this next year. If you want to, it's okay if you don't. And uh, Richard, I actually I see your question in there too about advanced manufacturing. Uh, we'll go back to that in one second as well. Um, but yeah, just to kind of go back to computer information technology, you know, jobs are everywhere. You'll hear us talk about jobs, but think about it right now. Everyone has a computer in their pocket pretty much. Mm -hmm. So this is needed now more than ever in this area. Um, cars have computers. Um, you know, you have you know, casinos, we talk about programming, technology, you know, televisions, all different things along those lines. Um, Brandon, I do see you asked a question on here as well. Um, most interest you're working with me, networking software. Yeah, so that that would basically, if you're looking more for the networking and software development, that would definitely be a, a highlight at Johnson. You know, we touch base on Linux systems, Cisco. Um, we're always adding in some different certification on here as well. So it's, it's definitely a, um, a program that's always evolving. Nico, I see you had asked about what things you would do with computer technology. It's kind of like I just mentioned, um, it's, it's a full service program. So again, if you're gonna start off, um, think repairing PCs. If you have an issue um, with programming, getting uh, security, networking, you know, uh, cybersecurity, networking systems, building your own network, building your own platform. So again, it's, there's a lot of different avenues you can go in that, in that and, area. And, and, and the, the updates coming next year for the program include um, the, all of those Amazon web services, cloud-based uh, uh, functions, infrastructures that business use. So we're really expanding on that. Uh, in addition to, to, to additional software um, and coding opportunities. So really expanding on, on the opportunities. There are gonna be numerous electives you could take too. So you can really pick the path in which you wanted to take um, as the, the general computer information technology program, you're going to see there's a lot of, um, you know, the, the, the basic hardware, software, networking, and then you can kind of pick into see what kind of 
um, additional programming opportunities there are moving forward. So really see some nice progress uh, involving in that program, which has to be uh, keeping up with, with technology. Yeah, and and uh, one other thing too, I just wanna touch on with this program. Uh, most of our programs are what we call like a terminal degree. So usually students don't go back to school afterwards. But with computer information technology, we actually do have several transfer agreements set up with some local institutions that are four-year degrees. Um, so students do have that opportunity to, to transfer directly from Johnson College into one of these, one of these other colleges. Um, you know, a lot of times what we talk about is go out, get a job in your field, and then your employer will pay for that. That's usually a way that a lot of our students like to go. But it definitely is, um, it definitely is a program when you you know, graduate from here, there is other opportunities if you want to further your education. Uh, give you an example, we actually have an alum. Uh, he graduated from here with his associate's degree, got a job, went and got his uh, bachelor's degree, the company paid for it, and he actually works for IBM right now. Um, Sal, his name is. So Sal is a um, great example that shows what you could do with a computer information technology um, associate degree here at Johnson. Um, we'll I just back like to circle to back to, yeah. to, to Richard's question in terms of the actual design. So, um, yeah, I mean, in terms of the the uh, additive manufacturing and the computer data design, you will have that opportunity. In fact, our our advanced manufacturing program um, that they have built a, a 3D printer out of just basically 3D printing and manufacturing parts. So they really um, kind of go in depth in terms of the manufacturing side of things. And two, um, Richard, as far as like, you know, the, the creation, so the, you know, the design, um, our instructors too are very open about the, the fact that maybe you, there's something particular that you want to design. So if you have, you know, some type of project that you bring in or you want to work on, um, one of our students designed, and this is a small example, but he had this old um, uh, poster that he wanted to hang up. And on the back of the poster, there wasn't an area to mount like for a, a screw or like wiring that would go on there. And he actually 3D printed a piece that would go onto it. Um, with COVID going on, our students actually had 3D printed, um, you know, like the, the face shields that go on, not the actual masks, but the ones with plastic that stick a little bit further out. They actually 3D printed a, uh, a component that would work for those masks as well. So it's something where we had to kind of adjust to the times with that, but there is definitely a lot of opportunity to um, have some exploration and see a project through from the start to the finish. Uh, Bill, I do see Brandon, you were saying it's excellent, some old. Yeah, so you definitely, um, after two years, if you do transfer, Brandon's question was about transferring to, uh, you know, another pro, another area college or um, a degree. So, yeah, I mean, if you have your base here, you could go, you know, potentially maybe for a bachelor's degree um, that would be in just networking systems or, you know, maybe like app development, something along those lines. So, yeah, after you leave here, um, there's ample opportunity to go into bachelor's degree programs and you could specialize in some different areas there too. Um, and then just, just wanted to, some of the questions on here, we will get to these programs in shortly. So Donovan, I know you had a question on the car, uh, cabinet and uh, carpentry, uh, carpentry cabinet making program. We're going to be getting to that. And then same thing, Daniel, in terms of logistics. So hopefully we can answer your questions as we, as we move through. Um, uh, guys, this is great too. We appreciate yeah, the, the feedback. Like we said, this is what we want. Ask questions because we're here to we're here to help. All right, um, we'll touch base on our, our last uh, program that we have in the electronic and industrial division, and that's actually one of our one year certificates. It's welding technology. Uh, welding technology uh, is one of our more popular programs because it is that that one year certificate. You can complete the program essentially in nine months. Um, with this program, you learn three main types of welding. So you learn stick welding, MIG welding, and TIG welding. So you take classes on all of those. Um, upon graduation, not only would you have your academic certificate, you would have an OSHA card as well for safety. Um, so you would have that credential. And then you have an opportunity to take what we call the AWS exam. So it's the American Welding Society. You could also take an additional certificate exam. Um, this program, again, you start like all of them, you start from the ground up and um, work your way to the top with it. Uh, welding, a lot of times students don't realize how much it's needed. The chair I'm sitting on right now had metal pieces that were, you know, that were welded. Um, look around in your homes, air conditioners, all different types of components like that have welding. So definitely a great option as well, um, you know, for, for one of the shorter programs at Johnson College. Just kind of jumping back, Richard, I see you were asking about architectural drafting and design. Um, looks like you you've taken the last three years. 
and interested in that as well as the actual manufacturing. So yeah, we'll, we'll touch a little bit more on architectural drafting and design. I actually think it's um, on our next slide. Um, so that program deals more and we'll, we'll kind of get into it, but the manufacturing and the architectural drafting and design themselves themselves are a little bit different, but they do both involve 3D printing. And, and if you've been taking it at the Wilkes-Barre CTC for the past few years, we could also look into um, uh, credit that you may be able to receive uh, with, with the Pennsylvania SOAR program. Um, I'm sure you may be familiar with, with that. Um, you may be eligible to even just obtain college credits already based on what you've already taken. So instead of you know doubling up on what you've already done, so great. Does anybody else have any questions on our electronic and industrial division before we move on to um, one of our next divisions? All right, we're gonna move on right now to our building trades and technologies division. So see Richard, as promised, architectural drafting and design. <laughs> uh, so yeah, building trades and technology, this includes uh, five different programs here at Johnson College. All of them are fairly intertwined. Um, give you guys an example, it kind of wraps them all in together. You're building a new structure. Um, I know you were saying Wilkes-Barre CTC. So I know the Wilkes-Barre Area School District is building a new, um, new high school, okay? So they're going to build that high school. Obviously, they're not just going to take bricks and, uh, you know, pieces of wood and figure out what they're doing. It has to be planned, right? It has to be blueprinted. So that would be where the students who would come here for architectural drafting design would come in. They would do cost estimating for the materials. They would do, um, you know, materials estimation. How many, what type of qual uh, quantity do you need? They would do the blueprinting. They would do the design. Um, and Richard, kind of going, I would imagine you had some experience in CAD and Revit. Um, students do those, you know, their first year. So there's definitely an opportunity that, you know, if you had taken it, SOAR would uh, potentially be a, uh, a possible thing. But some programs, you know, some examples you do uh, on campus. Uh, a lot of our buildings here are um, just because the nature of the labs are one story. So just something simple that students do from the start. They would actually design how you would put a second story on um, a building on our campus, for example. Um, so it's practical stand, you know, practical things. And for those of you that don't have familiarity with architectural drafting and design, you are exposed to it every day. Every building that you're in, every piece of infrastructure, roads, highways, bridges, that is all done by people in this field. So extremely needed. Um, anytime something's being built, it has to be designed. What we always say. And Ange Angelica, I see you had a question in terms of shadowing. We are still offering shadowing opportunities. So at the end of the presentation, we'll have contact information um, that you will be able to get in touch with us. But Alex will also take notes uh, on, you know, anybody who wants a follow up to either do a one on one information session, which we could schedule on campus um, for you, you know, anytime. Uh, we could also schedule a one on one virtual session if you wanted that. We have the open house, we have the shadowing opportunities. So again, we want to, you know, this high level overview today is, is really for you to just ask your questions. And, and then, you know, if you wanted to take that next step, by all means, you know, we, we can definitely work on that. All right, so guys, moving on down, uh, carpentry and cabinet making. So I'm, again, I'm going to go back to our example of our school. We have our plans, we have our materials, we need people to build it. So that's where our carpentry students come in. Uh, carpentry and cabinet making, the name is a little bit deceiving because, you know, you think cabinet making, you're just going to be building cabinets. Um, you learn how to be a full service carpenter. So everything from uh, interior, exterior finishes, um, you know, think stair building, roofing, a lot of those fine touches. Um, but again, you start completely from the basics. The cabinet making is more, um, it's cabinet making, furniture building, uh, creative woodworking, which is pretty neat. So you, again, you would learn to be a full service carpenter here at Johnson. We're always looking for practical um, applications to this. So every year we actually do a carpentry auction that benefits a local nonprofit. And it's based off of, um, um, you know, projects that our students did during their time here at Johnson. So in your first year, you would get to see your work kind of come to fruition uh, during the end of your, your, you know, early days here at Johnson. So uh, carpentry, again, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> There's buildings popping up all over. There's new construction. So um, like all of our programs, there's a lot of money to be made in these fields. And especially, um, you know, since a lot of the, um, you know, a lot of your traditional carpenters or, you know, tradesmen, uh, tradesmen and women have been retiring. So there's a lot of openings in this area. And we'll kind of touch base a little bit more. Um, again, I'm using our school example. So our carpenters built it. Now we need electricity in it. Okay. So electrical construction and maintenance is just that. It's, um, 
you know, putting electricity in, okay? So you would start again, think the most basic form of electricity um, that you would see kind of in your house on a daily basis, you plug things in, right? Everyone has, you know, a little phone, they have to plug in it, plug that in at the end of the night, our computers are plugged in right now. So, um, you know, outlets, wires, light switches, think a two-way light switch, you know, you turn it off on the bottom of the steps, you turn it on at the top of the steps and vice versa. So our students learn that residential side of their first year, and then they go into what we call uh, the industrial side. So motor controls, um, you will learn more higher level things. So think, um, you know, at, at your first year is more that residential, and then that second year, you would do specifics that you would be able to work at like a power plant, for example. Um, you, this is an example of our motor controls here. Um, you know, getting an example, we uh, the Rail Rider Stadium that was recently, well, not recently, but about five years ago refurbished. Uh, a lot of our graduates actually worked there and installed the lights and this uh, commercial, you know, amount of electricity that would be, that would have to have enough uh, bandwidth to actually support a whole baseball stadium. So you get into higher level things like that. Another one of our programs where you're, you know, in industry a lot, uh, our students right now actually, uh, industry partner we work with, Simplex, they are actually doing their labs exclusively the first year students at Simplex. Um, right near campus and the students go there, they're able to see their work right in front of them. So we are getting students out in industry. Touch base on HVAC. Again, we're going back to our school, guys. I'm a broken record, but you need heating and air conditioning in it. Anywhere you go in the world, you need one or the other. Northeast PA is unique because we need both. And a lot of times we can need both in one day, depending on uh, how the weather's been, especially lately. You know, and this doesn't just include heating and air conditioning, but refrigeration. You know, during the pandemic, unfortunately, a lot of people were out of work. HVAC technicians did not fit that bill. If it was snowing out and 20 degrees and your heat breaks, it does not matter what it costs, you're going to get that fixed. Same thing with your air conditioning. If it's 100 degrees out, you need air conditioning. Um, and just think of the broad scope of this. I talked about refrigeration, okay? Restaurants, the amount of inventory restaurants keep in, supermarkets, all of those different areas need HVAC technicians. So, you know, you would learn that, it seems like there's a lot, but you learn the basic refrigeration component, component for all of those different devices and work your way up. And then lastly, uh, one of our one-year certificate programs, this is a little bit newer to Johnson College, it's building and property maintenance. So this program is uh, pretty unique as it, it's, again, one of the one-year certificates. So like welding, it could be completed in nine months. You learn uh, a little bit of each of these traits. You do learn some electrical, as you can see on here, residential wiring. You do interior and exterior finishes, which would be the carpentry side of things. You learn how to do some plumbing. Um, there are some, you know, general education classes like all of our programs. And then you also learn basics of property maintenance. So typical career for this, think, um, uh, Kalahari Resort, for example, that's where they have the indoor water park. Kalahari employs a slew of maintenance technicians uh, that need to fix smaller problems that kind of come up. So, you know, in this, you're not going to be a master HVAC tech or a master electric electrician like you would with one of the two-year degrees, uh, but this kind of covers a broad spectrum. So um, it's a cool, cool program. You can get in and out fairly quickly and, um, you know, learn the basics on all of these. And um, a lot of times students will be able to actually come in and advance in this you know, they were working a job, maybe they wanted to advance. Building a property maintenance is a good area for them to, uh, to look to. So just kind of going in the chat, guys. I know, um, Avery, I see you have a question about radiology. Again, um, like Bill I spoke said, with Avery. I, I responded on the chat a little bit with her um, individually, so. Wonderful. So yeah, we'll, we'll get to those in a little bit. Um, but guys, any other questions about the building trades? One thing I, I will mention as well before we go to the next um, next set of programs here, uh, carpentry, electrical, and HVAC at Johnson College actually all have the same exact first semester too, which is pretty unique. So our programs being they are those one-year certificates or two-year associate degrees, you have to come in with a declared major. So that's what makes this different than a four-year school. You can't come in undecided. So with all of those programs, if you're interested in one of those three, your first semester, you would actually have a class that would teach you five weeks of HVAC five weeks of electrical and five weeks of carpentry to make you a little bit more well-rounded. So, you know, Bill goes for carpentry, I'm electrical and Dr. Katie is HVAC. Um, we will all know a little bit of each of our trades after our first semester here at Johnson, uh, which is pretty neat. Yeah, so. and, I and I think we want to, you know, we want to do that because our industry partners, uh, we're looking for well-rounded technicians. So if you're a carpenter, 
um, you should probably you know, know a little bit about electricity. So when you're building that wall, you're going to know where the wires are going to need to go or where the pipes need to fit. So uh, having that you know, additional cross training uh, definitely goes a long way for our industry partners, uh, as well as your own uh, you know, personal skills for you know, future home ownership. Sure. Any questions on our building trades and technology division? Okay, great. Well, we'll move on uh, and we'll talk about our transportation and logistics. I know, um, I think Avery had a question about tra logistics. So uh, why don't we start off with logistics, Alex, and you can sure. talk about that. Everybody loves yeah. logistics, right? Everybody loves ordering from Amazon and having to package the next day. It's amazing. I know we, we laugh. Um, we say that, you know, logistics, when you hear the term, people don't know what it is. Everyone experiences it each and every day. So yeah, like Bill mentioned, Amazon's a prime example. Okay. So I think Amazon, um, especially our area, if any of you guys, like I live towards Pittston and there's a large industrial park there and it's all different distribution centers. So, you know, basically logistics is the, the science, if you want to say behind getting a project from the warehouse side of things and overseeing that supply chain management so it gets to the customer. Um, an example of that again is Amazon Prime. You go online with one click, you could order something um, and it's sent to your door in two days with Amazon Prime, okay? Well, it's not just like someone, you know, that just magically happens. There's a supply chain management protocol behind that. So people have to figure out, okay, how is this going to work? How is it efficient? And how does Amazon exactly do this? That's what students do in this program, okay? They, they manage supply chain. Um, a lot of our alumni work, you know, locally in the area. We have a student that works, or excuse me, a graduate that works at Neiman Marcus. We have a graduate that works at uh, Adidas, which is actually newer. It's in uh, Wilkes-Barre. So with this program, you oversee those things from the, you know, the front, front to the back, pretty much. You take classes such as um, top quality management. And uh, Bill, if you want to go to the course outline here, I could kind of just show a few of those a little bit more. Um, you know, international logistics, uh, inventory control, warehousing and distribution. And then you also have that business side of things too, um, to make you a little bit more well-rounded in it. So project management, economics, uh, management and supervision, and then, um, you know, an internship we, we encourage our students to take. So if you are at Johnson um, and, you know, a lot of our programs, there's an opportunity for an internship. So you are getting that hands-on um, experience, not only at Johnson, but in the field as well. Um, logistics one, is... Oh, one thing about our area, and we always, you know, we talk about the skill trades, which of course are essential and are never going away. But one thing that makes the logistics um, and Northeastern Pennsylvania very attractive to industry partners is that some ridiculous statistic that we are within a one one night's drive to like 70 percent of the entire country population so you think about a a, a a manufacturing or distribution facility who you know needs needs a centralized location to distribute their product uh, northeastern pennsylvania is is a very attractive area to that so all the way from hazelton all the way up through scranton you have 80 80 interstate 80 interstate 81 the turnpike and it's just that ease of access so when you're thinking about um you know career opportunities in that that all of these major companies that are in our area everything from Am amazon chewy american eagle uh, these large distribution facilities are looking for inventory control managers, supply chain managers. Um, and this is an opportunity for you to really, you know, kind of get that entry level position and work your way up with some, you know, really large, well-established organizations within our area. Uh, that's super well said, Bill. Our, you know, we play to the strengths of our area as well. Um, logistics is something that is not going away. It's, you know, a program that, that's here to stay. back as well. Um, we'll kind of touch base on some of these other programs in the uh, transportation and logistics side of things. So um, the, the other four kind of intertwine quite nicely. Um, we do have a um, automotive technology program, diesel truck technology, heavy equipment, and diesel preventative maintenance. So all of these programs are very similar and they're working on some type of engine. Okay, so automotive technology uh, focuses on gas engines, okay? So you would be working on vehicles. Now it's not an auto body repair. Um, it is basically a, um, you know, automotive technology. So fixing your vehicle. So if I'm driving down the road and my car starts shaking and making some type of noise that scares the daylights out of me, this would be the, uh, you know, the, the graduate from this program would be the one to help me out in that area. 
So automotive technology, we're doing everything as far as um, from the headlights to the taillights, we always say. So think um, simple things such as, you know, oil headlights to transmission rebuild, um, steering and suspension. And then there's also, again, I, I alluded to it earlier, a lot of technology in vehicles now. So just think power windows, okay? There's a, a system that controls that. Cars themselves have computers in them now. So a lot of times our students have to, you know, they're essentially a car doctor. So we teach our students all different things here. So you would have, you know, we'll have you working on the vehicle that is a, uh, you know, a 1980 Buick LeSabre, let's say. And then you have your, your vehicle that's, um, you know, a 2015 BMW that we, um, you know, that you might be working on. Those vehicles are completely different. So our students learn both sides of things when they're here at Johnson College in this program. Um, and then the diesel truck technology program, very similar as well as heavy equipment technology. Your first year is actually exactly the same. So your, your steering and suspension systems classes, your vehicle maintenance and repair, those apply whether you're working on, you know, a piece of farm equipment, a tractor trailer, or a, um, you know, a gas engine vehicle. So with diesel truck technology, again, same idea, but just bigger. Okay, so think bigger, bigger size, bigger uh, components and all of those, um, you know, all of those needs. So, you know, diesel, the need for it, that's our supply chain. You know, guys know during uh, the height of when everything happened with the uh, shutdowns and, you know, coronavirus in March, April, there was a shortage of all these basic products, uh, you know, toilet paper, paper towels, cleaning supplies. Well, who are the people that are responsible to getting that, getting that there? It's truck drivers, it's people in this transportation industry. And if those vehicles aren't up and running, they weren't there. So we, we hear frequently um, about how much our diesel mechanics are needed. Um, and again, in our area, we have two major uh, landfills. So you have garbage companies, you have, uh, you know, we talked about Amazon. Amazon has those new vans everywhere. So that's auto and diesel. And then you have uh, UPS, FedEx, all different vehicles like that. And just because it's diesel truck technology in the title, it does not have to be just trucks. Diesel engines are in everything from, you know, planes, trains, automobiles. So you could work on all three of those at Johnson. And then heavy equipment technology, uh, just get a little bit more specified into that. That's um, our newest program here at Johnson. And again, your first year is the same as automotive and diesel. Uh, but heavy equipment, you go more into that, uh, like farm equipment. So think of that earth moving equipment. So backhoes, bulldozers, you know, your large John Deere tractor. So this program specializes in maintenance of those, of, you know, those different types of material, or excuse me, those different types of equipment. We partner with industry on all of our programs, um, specifically for heavy equipment. One of our industry partners, Five Star Equipment, they work closely with us as well, as far as providing an internship and an onsite lab for our students at Johnson. So great opportunity if you're in one of these three programs. Uh, the neat thing about it too, is if you go for one and graduate within two years, you could come back for the other and graduate within one year only. So if, you know, I go for automotive technology, I want to come back for diesel truck technology, it would only take me an additional year. And then um, speaking of one year, I'll touch base on diesel preventative maintenance. Uh, again, one of our three certificate programs here at Johnson, um, very similar to diesel truck technology and the other programs and you take the vehicle maintenance and repair. This is just a smaller certificate um, where students uh, could graduate and their goal will be more so to just be um, and a, more, be more of a technician as opposed to a um, you know more of a maintenance technician as opposed to a, a diagnostics technician. So you still do learn the overhaul the fuel injection. Um, your biggest difference is you don't work a lot on uh, transmission systems and in the diesel preventative maintenance as you would in the diesel truck technology. Guys any questions on those I know I'm kind of spewing out a lot of information here. I know we did have some questions on our on our health and animal sciences, which is our next division. So uh, unless we have any questions on our transportation and or logistics programs, um, I think we can we can move on. Awesome. Our health and animal sciences. Thanks, Bill. Yeah, so a lot of a lot of you guys um, did have questions about these. So uh, Johnson College, these are programs that are a little bit different than some of our other ones. We do physical therapist assistant, radiologic technology, and veterinary technology. Um, I'll kind of get to your questions in a little bit, but get a brief overview on them. Um, physical therapist assistants, uh, think about that as more of a, a nurse per se, okay? So you're, to be an actual physical therapist, it's a doctoral degree, seven, eight years of schooling. 
Um, you leave school with a lot of debt and it takes a lot of long time to graduate. The physical therapist assistant program here at Johnson, it's one of our two year degrees and um, you would essentially be the one that would work with patients. So the physical therapist, you know, would be the one that would diagnose them. So if I broke my leg in a car accident, was having a hard time walking again, I would need to go to physical therapy. There's a good chance I would say some of you on this, this call have had physical therapy. So you would go for physical therapy, you would get diagnosed and then someone would have to work with you step by step to make sure that you're you know, doing the proper rehabilitation and working with you. So that's where PTA would come in. So again, great program at Johnson College. Uh, heavy science base is the, um, the key to this program. You know, if you're going to be working on someone and rehabilitating them, you have to know the anatomy and physiology. You have to know the bones, you have to know the nerves, you have to know the tendons, um, you know, the placement and positioning. As you can see from this course outline too, there's, um, you know, therapeutic exercise lab, there's a neurology lab, rehabilitation. And then with this program too, students do clinical experiences as well over the course of the semester. So they're actually going out. Again, it's a little bit different. I, I, I know we're saying industry, but they would go out to a, a place that does offer, you know, physical therapy and we would place you there. And that's where you would do those placements. So not only are you getting work at Johnson College, you're getting work out in the field as well. So great program. Again, I always just compare it. Think of, um, you know, if you were in the hospital, you probably see the doctor once or twice a day, but the majority of the time you'd be working with a nurse. Um, same thing with a PTA. You would see the, P the actual physical therapist maybe once or twice. The physical therapist assistant is kind of like your nurse and that they're working with you, you know, the majority of the time, close up, hands on. So. Um, radiologic technology guys, again, two year associate degree. This is one of our more popular programs on the campus. Um, like physical therapist assistant, it is a limited program. We usually accept around uh, anywhere from 20 to 25 students, depending on clinical placement. And what makes this so popular is that there are a lot of schools in this area that have it as a four-year degree. So you have to go for, you know, you go for your four-year bachelor's degree, graduate, and you have to take your board exam. Well, what happened, you know, at Johnson College, you go and you earn, earn your two-year associate degree program because you start taking your radiologic technology classes right from the get-go and you sit for the exact same board exam. So think about it, you could go somewhere for four years, have to pay for school for four years, go to Johnson College for only two years, uh, only have to pay for two years of schooling and sit for the exact same board exam. Um, one of the misconceptions with this program is that it's just you know taking pictures of people um, and getting x-rays. I'm sure a lot of you had x-rays and it might seem at the point, you know, easy. Maybe you broke your arm. A lot that goes into this, you know, positioning, placement, all of those different things um, students have to work on here. And a lot of times everyone thinks, you know, it's someone like us right now where, you know, maybe I just broke my arm. It's, it's like this, you have to take me for an x-ray. A lot of times there's, um, you know, infants that have to come in for x-rays. Sometimes there's people that have come in just after an accident. Um, you know, people come in with, you know, blood all over them and not to get too graphic, but there's, this is definitely a medical field program. And, um, you know, same thing, anatomy and physiology, you have to know the positioning and placement, you have to know the medical terms. Um, and, you know, it, it's a great field to get into. Uh, a lot of our students that come into it, and this just shows the strength of the program, are actually students who already have um, bachelor's degrees sometimes because it's, it's such a great field to get into and it's, um, you know, it's needed. An x-ray technician is not going anywhere to say the least. And students from all over, I know you guys were asking about, you know, SATs and ACTs. Um, we encourage, you know, for these programs, we always encourage if you did take them to send them in, um, but they're not required for our programs, though, for any of our programs here at Johnson College. Um, especially this year, we're talking to students more and more so that these exams are getting canceled. So now more than ever, we're more lenient with those. Um, and then guys, I'll just touch base uh, briefly on veterinary technology, and then we'll kind of go into some specific questions. Uh, so veterinary technology, kind of similar to the physical therapist assistant program and then it's almost like a nurse. So again, I'm gonna use my example of the doctor. If you're in the hospital, you see the doctor once or twice during your day, majority of your contact would be with the nurse. Um, it's kind of this way for animals too, and our, you know, for animals, when you compare a vet tech to a veterinarian. Uh, the veterinarian is, you know, same thing, you know, eight years of schooling. Uh, the vet tech, it's one of our two year associate degrees and it is that nurse for animals. So very much a hands-on program. Um, you can see from the little bit of 360 view on our lab, we specialize in everything, you know, specialize in so many different areas and you could choose whether you want to work with large animals or small animals here. Um, the neat thing about this program 
is that you actually get your, you know, all of our programs include hands-on work. Veterinary technology, we actually have a, an animal clinic that is open on campus. It's open once a week. So we have uh, th three full-time um, staff members that are, you know, certified vet techs. And then we actually have a, a veterinarian on staff as well. So people in the community could actually go, they could make an appointment, they could bring their animal to Johnson College and have a procedure done. Obviously our, you know, faculty oversees this, but our students get a chance to see this and work on the animals. Now, you know, if you had a, a dog or a cat and they had, you know, a crazy injury, you're not going to bring them here for that. Think smaller things along the lines of um, like a urinalysis, uh, nail clippings, as far as, um, you know, looking at uh, spades and neuters, that's one of our more common ones. So during that time, students would get practice with the anesthesia. They would get practice, um, you know, we have a full service kennel in the back that we, we partner with local animal shelters in. So you get exposure to all of these things, um, which is pretty neat at Johnson College. And this is a unique program. Um, again, you do have those, those uh, rotations, the kennel rotation that you have. And then there's also the internship as well. So um, one of our instructors actually, she is an alum. So she did graduate from Johnson College, worked in the field for years and came back. And she actually, uh, for, for her internship, did it over the summer after she graduated, like, you know, um, pre-graduation. And she worked at a zoo in uh, St. Louis, Missouri. She, vet tech took her from Scranton to St. Louis. She was able to find that opportunity. So there are animals everywhere. Uh, this is a program that's not going anywhere. And, you know, myself, you know, you have your Instagram, your Facebook. People love posting pictures of their dogs. And it seems like more and more people are getting animals. So there's a lot of different uh, avenues you could take in this field. And uh, just wanted to answer uh, uh, one of the questions Alyssa had earlier in terms of general education courses. So, uh, but I think this is relevant to all of our programs. All of our programs have a general education component to it. So, you know, the requirements include art and science and social science and math. And, and so that's really to, to provide a well-rounded uh, career ready professional within the field. Um, you know, obviously I want my automotive technician to be able to put maybe five liters of of oil in my car rather than five gallons. I think maybe we would want that. So we really think that it's it's certainly important. And it's also important in terms of, you know, the general soft skills that we, we like to provide our students for uh, industry and what they want. So that well-rounded technician um, is needed. So all of the courses you can see um, on, on the website under the course selection or the course outline, you will see the general education requirements. So um, there's a variety of art electives. I mean, science, chemistry is 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 big with, with some of the, the health science and science programs, um, computers. So if you've taken courses at another college before, um, by all means, we will evaluate. We'll talk a little bit later about uh, the transcript evaluation um, because we can match that without having you to, you know, kind of take extra classes that you wouldn't need. Um, and then Alex, I see here, Alyssa has uh, uh, attended the BOCES in Goshen for animal science and graduate. If she graduated, she, um, she'd be a certified vet assistant. So would that affect, affect the two-year program at all? Um, I mean, I think it's something we can probably take a look at in terms of um, an academic transcript to see if there's anything that, you know, we could, we could transfer in. Uh, I know Pennsylvania has, has different things in place. So I don't know if Alex, if you have any specific yeah. experience with the BOCES. Yeah, Alyssa, we don't have a ton of students that come from BOCES, but we have had them in the past. I would encourage you just to get your materials to us and we can evaluate them. Um, and in terms of animals, yeah, if, you're if, always working on animals because we have animals on campus uh, pr pretty much all the time. We have um, uh, industry partners off campus and then locations off campus that we're able to work on uh, larger animals. So, I mean, I know today one of our enrollment specialists, she, she brought her kittens in, so they were working on cute little kittens. Yeah, with, um, with that too, the, the kennel, the student, the animals are usually here, um, it's the semester's 15 weeks. They're usually here from like week three to week 13. It's so right around that time. Um, so that's when the, the ones that are always here are, but like Bill said, people could bring, make appointments, bring their animals in for it. Um, and then Alyssa, just to go back to with the BOCES, um, like I said, send it in. We, we are happy to look at it and could see, you know, how that will affect the program if it could lessen it for you in terms of uh, a couple less classes you have to take. We're more than happy to look at that and see, you know, just what we could do with it. Um, I, I do want one other thing too. I know a couple of you had asked questions about, you know, general education classes and um, specifics along those lines. Just to, all of these programs are ones too that definitely lend themselves more so to that general education uh, component. 
you know, we do a public speaking course and a lot of times students get nervous when they hear that. Think about vet tech, okay? Um, if anyone unfortunately ever had to put, you know, an animal to sleep, usually someone has to come out and tell you that that happens. That's not a fun conversation to have. And I know I'm getting a little, a little serious here with it, but you know, that's why we want these student, our students to take, you know, these different types of classes here at Johnson. We want them to be able to have that well-roundedness and like Bill said, the soft skills. Same thing with physical therapist assisting. You're going to be interacting with patients uh, and radiologic technology on a daily basis. So our other programs are, you know, definitely trade centered. Um, these ones you are with, well, vet tech, obviously you're with animals more so, but they're a little bit more people sensitive um, in terms of those soft skills being needed. Thanks, Alex. Does anybody have any questions um, on our last division, uh, health and animal sciences, before we kind of move on and talk about our other student support services and other services offered on campus uh, and kind of move into an open discussion? Okay, well, feel free to use the chat. I mean, you guys are all doing a great job and that's okay. And if you want to unmute yourself, do that too. You know, we like to hear you, your voice, your voice. All right. So, um, you know, from, from, an, from a, an overhead perspective here, this is kind of a look of our campus uh, in terms of the, the buildings on campus, where we're spread out. Um, after, after, after this map, we're going to, I'll show you a short video that kind of gives a little overhead footage along with some lab, lab classes, lab, lab class footage inside. So um, give you a better idea of exactly what the campus is. So I'm going to queue up the video here. It's probably going to take a second. Hang on. There we go. And uh, Dr. Kate and Alex, if you could hear it, you just give me a thumbs up. Sorry, that was my fault. So uh, one thing I do want to say is that, as you can see, we're, we're definitely a very hands-on campus. Um, and so one thing that we, you know, we really decided to make a commitment to during, um, you know, the, the, the pandemic is, you know, we realize that our, our students and our uh, employees are, are essential employees. So whether our, we work with our industry partners or in lab on campus, we really made that commitment to providing that hands-on education um, and really continue that for our students. Um, that's mostly why our students choose us, the, is that hands-on education, that real-world experience. So, you know, we definitely wanted to continue that and, you know, in a safe environment, of course. I mean, our lab classes were always small to begin with. I mean, we always prided ourselves on that individual attention. So really taking advantage of, of those small classes and now we just have to wear masks. So, um, and keep our distance. But in terms of you know, what we do on a daily basis, that hasn't changed. Um, you know, we were always immersed in industry. We were always working with industry partners, utilizing the live lab experience out there. So that hasn't changed for us. And we still continue to, you know, plan on doing that moving forward. Um, 
in terms of the general admissions process and requirements. So you learned about the program. If you think it's something that you wanted to continue moving forward, I'll let Alex, who oversees our enrollment department, our admissions department, uh, kind of talk to you about next steps and where we go from here. Thanks, Bill. So yeah, guys, the, um, you know, the admissions requirements at Johnson are fairly simple. I know a lot of times students get overwhelmed with the thought of applying to college. We make it easy. We, you know, again, we thrive on that personalized attention. So we're, we'll definitely work with you throughout this. So kind of just before going into this, like Bill said, um, you know, we are open for visits too. So you can do the shadows, you can do informa individual information sessions in person, and then our, our open house too. I know I'm skipping ahead a couple points on this, but I do want you guys to know that as well. So if you're um, you know, definitely like what you saw tonight, want to come to campus, we could schedule that. Or if you want to apply, again, just at johnson.edu, um, you can click apply now or johnson.edu backslash apply. Our application fee was usually $25 with everything going on with the pandemic. We understand people are struggling. Um, you know, it's unprecedented in a lot of what's happening. So the application is free, so you could go on and complete it. Uh, regardless of which program you're applying for, um, you know, whether you graduated high school in 2020 or if you graduated high school, you know, you're graduating in 21 or, you know, 20 years ago, we still do need your high school transcripts or GED on file. Um, so we will get those. We do need them. We will review them. Um, we have a different protocol we go through for GED students, but we would need your high school transcripts. Um, our program requirements um, for 15 of our 18 programs, you would essentially just need that completed application and then the high school transcripts or GED scores. Um, for the health and animal science of so the vet tech, um, radiologic technology and physical therapist assistant program, there are additional requirements. They include essay questionnaires, um, some of them observation hours. Um, so we will kind of work with you along those lines, not to overwhelm you guys. So basically once you apply, we'll get your application, we'll call you and we'll kind of go through what you need to do. Um, SAT and ACT scores, I spoke about those. You know, if you did take them, are planning to take them, feel free to submit them, but not required. Same thing goes to if you were a transfer student, maybe you did, um, you know, went to a school years ago, you're looking to come to Johnson from somewhere else right now, you can submit those and we could evaluate them for transfer credit. Uh, Alyssa, you were talking about BOCES, um, you know, being that's uh, it's not exactly a college, but more of a tech school, um, like what we, in Pennsylvania, like our CTCs, we could look at those for evaluation. So it never hurts to submit any documents that you want for evaluation. Um, the FAFSA, that's the free application for federal student aid, that's what helps you pay to go to college. So, you know, a lot of times people get nervous and they'll see, oh, college is this expensive, how am I going to pay for it? That's where financial aid comes through and we do help you with that. Um, as far as financial aid, um, the free application for federal student aid is a general document. It's to the federal government. You do not have to pay for it. And whether you're going to Johnson College in Scranton, Pennsylvania, or a school in California, you would fill out that same FAFSA for that same document at Johnson. And again, something we're happy to work with you guys. It's a little bit more complex. We have services that we provide to help you with that. So again, don't get overwhelmed, all right? Campus visit, I spoke about that. We encourage you to come shadow, sit in on a lab, sit in on a program. Um, I had a student yesterday, he came for our HVAC program. He came for our electrical program this morning. Before he applied, he wanted to visit and do a shadow and see which one he would like better. Um, he actually ended up um, applying for electrical. That was his preference. So again, he kind of wanted to take a test drive before he figured out which one he was applying for. Um, placement, ex placement assessments for math and English. We, again, we talk about some of those general education requirements. As far as they go, you know, we never want to put you in something that's too difficult or too easy. So if you're great at math and, you know, maybe English isn't your strong suit, we might put you in a little bit of a lower level English to start out just to get you up to speed and vice versa. So we do assess you on that regard just so we put you in an area that you'll be, you know, be ready to go in. Um, at that point, once we go through all the requirements, you know, you would get accepted to Johnson College, stay involved. We're always reaching out to you. We're doing some fun events on campus, obviously a little bit more limited now, but, um, you know, to our accepted students, Dr. Katie and I over the summer went out several times. We dropped off t-shirts to our students, so we do want to keep them engaged. Um, and, you know, when you come here, we are a small campus. We have under 500 students, so you're not just a number, so we want to get to know you know you by name. Um, and it's not just, you know, I'm just going to pick a name Nicholas on here. Well, it's not just Nicholas. We want to know, hey, Nicholas, what are your likes? What are your dislikes? How can we get to know you? And that'll help us better serve you, you know, as a college and put you in a better, um, better position to succeed. Guys, I'm just going to jump in. I see a couple questions in the chat here. 
Daniel, you had asked about the GI Bill. Um, we do have a certifying veterans official, so we can help you with that. I can also answer individual questions with that. Uh, before the GI Bill, you would just need uh, your DD-214, basically saying, you know, when you were um, discharged, we'll be able to look at it, see how much time you served. And then we look at your certificate of eligibility, which if you don't know what that is, we can answer questions on that and help you request it. And that um, is how we are able to determine what type of funding you would get. So we do handle that. We make that a fairly easy process. And we have a lot of veterans on our campus, especially this year. So you wouldn't be, uh, certainly want to be alone in that regard. Um, and then again, guys, we talk about, you know, other classes and getting ahead. We do have a lot of different offers. So just because, you know, some of you might be in high school right now, um, doesn't mean that you can't, can't start chipping away. There's summer classes you could take before you would start off maybe take a general education class, maybe you struggle in math and want to get that done a little bit earlier. You could do an intercession class, which is that month in between our semester. So, you know, mid-December to mid-January. And then uh, we'll talk about it in a little bit. There's also dual enrollment um, at Johnson College. But again, just get ready to be essential. You're going to be part of the number 10 trade school in the nation. We were ranked up by Forbes. We want our students when they come here to know how important they are to our community and how important they are, you know, going to be to the world essentially after they graduate. Yes. It's, you guys are needed now more than ever. Yeah. And uh, Richard had a question in terms of would he, be, would he be able to apply this year, even though he's in 11th grade? And I mean, would it be necessary? But what I would say is let's talk and see how we could get you involved because there may be ways that we could, you know, help you in terms of knocking out some classes before you even finish, before you even finish high school. Um, and so there's certainly opportunities. So we can talk with one of our enrollment specialists and we can, we can walk you through that as well. Sure. Um, and then, and then kind of fall back on what Alex was talking about in terms of our certifying veterans officials. So just want to talk a little bit about our student support and resources on campus. One thing I tell all of our students is that you're not alone. On, we are, you know, we're a small school, but we, we really pride ourselves on that individual attention, that one-on-one um, -on -one attention. So every one of our staff members knows pretty much every one of our students. So just a few of these uh, student support resource and resource departments on campus. I've been working in post-secondary education for over 13 years, and I still am not 100% sure on how financial aid works and what I have to do. So lucky for me and lucky for you, we have uh, our experts on campus who help students every step of the way, um, whether that's starting out filling out the FAFSA, uh, trying to figure out how to pay for college, helping you with your, your GI Bill um, or your, you know, veterans funding. So we have a department on campus that's really gonna help and walk through that. Um, and then once you are a student, even before a student, we have academic advisors who help you along the way. They help you create that customized education plan to fit your need, um, you know, because we have students right out of high school and we have adult learners with families. So, you know, you may be looking to go part-time and work or you may be looking to go full-time. So really the, having that conversation with the academic advisors who follow you from, you know, before you even start school all the way through graduation, um, they can help you kind of reach that goal. And then in addition, while you're here, we also have a counseling and disability services. So, you know, whether, you know, somebody has a, even if it's a, a physical disability or a learning disability, we have services in place. Or if you're just super stressed out during finals, we have opportunities that somebody on campus that you can help and, and talk with, um, you know, to, to have that opportunity. Uh, the Student Reset Resource Center on campus, and that ha helps you with um, tutoring services, we have opportunities for a quiet place to study, uh, online and text resources should you need to do some researching for, for class. So that's, that's available. Our student engagement department who helps out with a lot of the, you know, the campus activities and involvement on campus, uh, clubs, organizations, leadership opportunities. And they also work closely with our career services department in providing industry, industry partnerships and industry relationships. A lot of times people ask us, you know, why did you choose Johnson College? Well, I choose Johnson College because of the type of career and what type, why do you choose that type of career? Because there's a lot of job opportunities. Career services helps out with uh, helping our students with job placement after graduation. So our 2019 infield job placement rate was 86%, um, and which is great. And, and what I used to say, worked many years in career services, of the other 14%, you know, probably their phone numbers were wrong or something because there's a lot of opportunities in here for for job placement. So career services will help you do that, not only, you know, right after graduation, but beyond. And, you know, as you become an alumni and you gain experience, you know, like to continue that relationship. 
In addition, for our students, we have a continuing education department that can help you build on your credentials. Um, for a lot of our programs, we have additional education available. So if you're in the radiologic technology program and you want to get an MRI or CT certification, um, if you're in IT and you want to expand and, and take additional courses or in automotive or diesel, there's additional opportunities for you to upskill and kind of stack those credentials from when you're here. Um, and then also, I know some, some, some of you may have talked about taking credits at other colleges. You know, we will evaluate uh, your, your, your transcripts from another college to see what credits can transfer into our program so that you're not taking courses that you don't need um, and really maximizing the time that you're here. And then Alex talked about transfer out opportunities. Although, you know, we do have these terminal degrees and we want to we prepare you for, for employment after graduation, there are opportunities where some of our students want to uh, advance on that four-year degree. And that's fine. Uh, we, have, we have many opportunities both locally and even, um, you know, uh, schools farther away that students can continue on for their bachelor's degree. I know just off, off the top of my head, our computer information technology, our logistics, our veterinary technology program, those opportunities for you to continue on for a higher degree, they're there. So we have these support resources on campus. Um, and even as a prospective student, you can make an appointment with our enrollment department, take a tour of the campus, but then also meet individually with one of these, one of these departments to really answer your questions you know, more in depth than we, what we could do here. Uh, but again, we provide that one-on-one -on -one attention. And now, I mean, more than ever, we can do it in person, we can do it virtually. So really it's, you know, we're, we're just a, a phone call away. Um, does anybody have any questions on the general student support services on campus? Um, oh, and Brandon, I see, I see your question on the CompTIA A plus certification. Um, yes, actually, we just made an, an update within our uh, computer information technology program. And starting in the fall, we're gonna be looking at, um, we actually added it, class time within our computer hardware and software course so that you guys will be prepared to take that A plus certification your first semester. Um, and I know that's kind of one of the number one certifications that IT Pro needs. Um, so that'll be kind of built right in and you'll have that opportunity to do that from your first semester. Um, and then Delaney has a question in terms of the, the maximum, you just slid away on me there, uh, the maximum students in the radiology program. Um, and the physical therapist program also has a, uh, a cap as well. The veterinary program, um, right now we have, we haven't, I mean, it, there's a lot of students available in the vet tech program. And so as long as we keep adding our, our clinical sites, we haven't, we haven't met that cap yet. So, I, I mean, if you're interested in any of these programs, so I would just say apply early, um, apply early, talk with one of our enrollment specialists. Alex went over the enrollment, uh, the admissions requirements. Um, there's not a lot. I mean, if you could, if you could work to get it in, it goes a long way. Um, and also, we, we, we do also offer uh, intercession. So between, you know, December and January, intercession courses and summer courses. So what I always tell students is if what can really help your application, if you're looking to boost your application in any of our programs, take an intercession, take a summer course, because nothing shows us more that you're ready to be a Johnson College student than being successful in a Johnson College class. Um, so you have that opportunity as well. Yeah, I see Alex answered that already. Thanks, Al. Any other questions in terms of student support and resources or even general programmatic questions that maybe we didn't cover that you were interested in or questions about the college in general? All right, well now we're gonna, this is the highlight of the entire college. So our, our president CEO has been in her position, I wanna say almost three years, right, in, as the president, yeah. but with the college 12. Um, so everything she's gonna talk about now, and part of the success of Johnson College really is from her vision and, and how we're moving forward. So I'm gonna let her kind of talk about our mission, our vision, you know, and why students choose Johnson College. Yeah, so I've been, as Bill mentioned, so I'm just wrapping up, I guess I wrapped up my two, two and a half years with, with Johnson College as president and CEO, but I'm no stranger to the college. I've been there actually 13 years. Um, so, you know, I've seen the evolution of, of the, the college, especially within the last five years. We've made a lot of big fundamental changes um, to become more flexible, um, to have those customized education plans, as Alex and Bill talked about. Um, and really, when I became president, what I saw is like our big next step forward. I, want, I saw a larger, more diverse Johnson College where students are immersed in industry uh, from day one because you know training not just for the jobs of today, but also the jobs of the future. Because when I've talked to students over you know, my 13 years at the college, that's what they say they want. They want that real world experience 
Um, they want that exposure to industry. Um, they want the hands-on, you know, we're visual hands-on learners um, at the college and that's everything that we provide. Um, I'd like to say, you know, we really delivered on our mission during the pandemic because it didn't get any more real world um, than what we um, kind of had to, to go through this past spring. And I have to say our faculty, our staff, and our students did not miss a beat. Um, when we were told we had to close campus, we quickly got everything online. I think there were a lot of doubters out there. Well, how does a hands-on institution um, transition to online? Well, our faculty did it and our industry partners were right there with us. So again, in terms of our relationship with employers, you know, as soon as they got settled, as we've talked about through this entire um, evening, our employers are essential. Every single one of our programs was connected to an essential industry. So even though campus had to remain closed during the pandemic, we couldn't reopen um, until right after the 4th of July holiday. We really, in essence, were open because our industry partners um, you know, welcomed our students into their locations so that they could complete their hands-on um, lab hours. And that's really what influenced our hybrid learning model going into the fall. So the students are still getting a bulk of their education, that hands-on learning, either on campus or out at industry locations. And we really pride our, ourselves um, on that. And, you know, as we've talked about through this presentation, we really, we're small and mighty. Uh, we take that very seriously. Um, you know, we will listen to, to what you need. Um, you know, there isn't one pathway to graduation, there isn't one pathway to a successful career. So our team will sit with you and really customize a plan that will work for your life, um, your skills, what you bring um, to, to the college, um, and really do its best to, to create something that's, that, that's going to work um, for you to help you achieve your goals. Um, and we really, we always check in with students. Like, like we talked about, we're a small campus, you will see me on campus, um, you know, I will ask you questions. I, I hope you ask me questions too. You'll see Bill, you'll see Alex. It doesn't just, you know, stop with this presentation today. Um, you know, our goal is to see you walk across that stage um, at commencement and then keep in touch with you as a successful alum. So um, we are a very tight knit community. Um, you know, we love to hear about our students' success story and our alumni success story. So we will, we will badger you and keep in touch with you and want to hear your um, success stories. But, um, you know, I think it speaks volumes to that how, you know, we have some assessment day survey information on this slide to just how satisfied students are with the opportunities we provide at the college. So, um, you know, it really, it's, this is, this is who we are. It's what we do. We take our tagline. We work. Um, to heart as well. And between that and our mission and vision, um, we, we really pride ourselves on, on delivering on that for all of you. That's all I have. Thank you. Sorry, my mute button was hiding That's on me. <laughs> um, all right. Well, does anybody have any questions for Dr. Katie? Um, and, and when she says she'll just pop in and, and ask you questions, she's not kidding. Uh, but I think, I mean, our students love that. I mean, looking at the assessment day surveys, a lot of them really are, are impressed at how well that they're, they're heard from faculty and staff on campus and the president. So, you know, we want to do what's best, not only for, you know, our employees, our staff, our industry partners, more, most importantly, our students. I mean, how can we help our students, uh, you know, obtain these essential careers and, and be successful in, in, in what they do? So. Any questions right now? Feel free to unmute yourselves. Let's chat. All right. Well, uh, real quick, we'll just talk about you know our tuition side. Our, our annual tuition is seventeen thousand seven hundred dollars. Um, you know, one thing we do pride ourselves in is is the amount of debt that our students do not have when they graduate, um, which is even more impressive because our students actually obtain careers where they're, you know, they're making a, a, a very sustainable living wage. Uh, the median the total debt after graduation for our, our students is 5,500 to 13,100. And this actually, uh, with, with the, the money that they actually make on a, a recent Georgetown University study, that actually puts us number one in our, in between all, for all local institutions on the five and 10 year return on investment on an education. So that means not only is, is the tuition lower than most schools in the area, you're also going to be making more money right out of, right out of the gate uh, versus some other uh, degrees in the area. So uh, there's also um, 
student loan payments are typically, you know, very low. Um, but we always tell our students to, to, you know, do your research, you know, take a look around at, at college opportunities. I talk about, you know, the skills learned at Johnson College. They're not just employment skills. I mean, they're life skills. Um, you know, you could be able to take these and, and move them anywhere. I've been doing a lot of work at home since we were doing the pandemic. And boy, did I wish I had some of the skills that Johnson College teaches, uh, whether it's carpentry, electrical, a lot of YouTube for me. So <laughs> it's, not, it's not the same. So any questions <laughs> on, um, uh, you know, Johnson College tuition, pricing? And then in terms of next steps, I do just want to open up for questions and answers. Um, of course, there's opportunity for one-on-one -on -one information sessions on campus. So if you want to come on campus and have a conversation with, you know, the program director, the, the, the admissions advisors, the financial aid advisors, counseling and disability, we can set that up. Um, if you want to come on campus and actually see what it looks like and take a tour, visit the lab, see what it, come to our open house uh, a, a week from Saturday, November 7th from 10 to 2. You can register online at johnson.edu slash open house. Um, of course, you can always apply online. Alex mentioned apply online for free, johnson.edu slash apply. But our website has a lot of information on there. So if you're really unsure, you just want to kind of go on on your own, certainly do that. Um, yep. uh, one other thing, I know we had a lot of high school students on our, on our, uh, on our presentation today, but I do want to talk about some, you know, just a short opportunity about dual enrollment. So if you're in high school, you know, whether you're virtual or in person, we have opportunities for students to obtain uh, college credits while they're still in high school. We actually have an industry fast track program where students can come to Johnson College and take hands-on courses and, and really uh, knock out a, a lot of credits within the program uh, and reducing the debt that they have. And we also have agreements with local high schools where we, some of your courses that you're already taking at your school district can count toward Johnson College credit. So that's another path, another opportunity um, that we can work through while you're, you know, while you come in to visit campus or while you have a, a you know, a one-on-one -on -one session. And of course, any of our contact information, you, we, we will send this uh, PowerPoint out to everybody so you have it. Um, but before we end, I just wanna ask, does anybody have any questions? Did we cover everything? Is there anything you would like to, to go back to? And again, guys, if there's anything on the programs, you know, contact information's there, feel free to reach out to us. We are happy to help. Um, I know sometimes this could be, you know, a little daunting maybe on the camera. Um, so if you want to talk, you know, face to face in person, if you want to talk over the phone, we're happy to, uh, to do that individualized portion of it. And like Bill said, we do have that in-person open house. So if you want to get a, you know, a broad look at everything, um, we can get that taken care of for you. Uh, Angelica, I see you had asked about a shadow. Um, I'm happy to uh, schedule it for you. So if you want, actually, um, if you want to give me a call as soon as this ends, I'll type my number to you in the chat here. Um, you can give me a call. We can get something set up now before, uh, before we head home for the night. And Brett, Brett has a question in terms of vocational school experiencing apl uh, applying towards college credit. Uh, yeah, there is opportunity. And I know you were interested in computer information technology. And I know our computer information technology program director was certainly open to that idea, especially because, you know, the things that happened at the end of the, the last school year. So we can definitely look at that. Um, you know, we would just need some, some information to further discuss the courses that you took, you know, where they could possibly fit into our program. Again, guys, any anything that you have that you think you could potentially earn credit for, let us know. We're, you know, submit it, whether it's college transcripts, your high school transcripts, we will look at them and anything we can do to help you to eliminate, you know, classes or even just one class, we're more than uh, more than willing to work with students in that regard. Yep. And I made a note of everybody who was interested in 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 scheduling a shadow or a one-on-one -on -one information session. So we're gonna be you know, debriefing after after the call and we will be in touch and schedule that so and you could even schedule online online yourself as well on our uh, johnson.edu under the visit us section you could actually go in and schedule um, pick a time that works best for you we'll call verify and set you up all right well thank you everybody we appreciate it again please Thanks, stay everyone. safe thank you
All right. Appreciate your time. Bye. Bye. Bye.